Hey everybody, this is part 5 in the ESP32 Automated Irrigation Control System series. If you're first joining us now, click the link here up in the top right will take you to the playlist. You can click on the first link or whatever link you left off from and continue from there. In our last video, we started measuring out sizing and cutting the plastics, setting up our project box so we can mount the hardware, installing our provisions for AC with Liquitite, devising strategies for mounting of hardware, the inclusion of the LCD display, and a second level for the relay board. More provisions were added to support the inputs, and measurements were taken to mount the LCD panel on the front cover of the box. An encoder was installed under it for later functionality, along with a breaker for added protection. Through that cover, access to the factory default button was then provided. Four AC lights were then added to be used as test interfaces for the solenoids. Finally, the external equipment received connectors, and then the meter, valve, and encoder were tested in software. In this video, we're going to take all that existing hardware and do a demo of the software thus far. And we're going to kick off everything by paperclip defaulting this unit. As mentioned, there's a button behind there. Using this length of wire, I'm going to hold in that button for five seconds until I see a default message that deleted all the configurations on this box. A dedicated process handles this. We take a look at the computer and we see our wireless networks. There should be an unsecured wireless appearing and it says sprinkling it. We connect to it now. The LCD display gives us this instruction and tells us to go to sprinkler32.local in our browser. When we do so, it takes us to the wireless network configuration page and refreshes all the wireless networks it finds in our area. I choose a network and find my home network on there and type in my key. I've added a show key toggle option as well. When we hit connect, that network connection will be attempted on the box itself and there'll be a success or a failure that'll be returned back to the browser. Either way, it will connect to the wireless network that it was originally on. And if it does connect, it will provide an instruction because it's on the same MDNS name, sprinkle32.local, it will simply reconnect to that device on the desired network. Unfortunately, if it fails, a lot of these computers will try and auto reconnect back to a working network. You may have to manually reconnect to sprinkle32's network. But here we see connection was a success. And we look at the indication, tells what the IP address is and that it is MDNS. It's like a 32 local. We need only click OK. And if I take a look up in the top right corner, I will see that I am back on my home network, but it automatically refreshed the page because we are at a login. And the default is uh, admin password as it's unconfigured. The default forces the user to the initial configuration page. The first requirement is changing the admin password. I kept it really lax for development. I didn't want anything complicated. It's just eight ones, eight ones. I throw it in real quick. And then next sets the uh, configurations. I have one of those preview default values in there so I know which ones I need. 15 is the GPIO for the meter. The measurement in gallons, the debounce delay, and the increment are actual values that I have preset. The valve requires three GPIOs monitoring the open position. Right, so 17, closed position is 18, and the relay for the valve is 16. So I set that now. Within the system configuration, I set the time zone. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. I got all the time zones in here. Eastern Standard. The rain sensor is not used yet. I'm gonna put 19, because that's where it's going, but I don't actually have that finished right now and future use, I've just left that as a placeholder. And I have four relays, and I have reserved GPIO for them for me. And that is 13 for the first one, and we're gonna give it a name. You could call that the front, and a small description there. And I'm just gonna click Add Zone for the next one, and keep doing that, and 14 is my next GPIO. We'll call that back, and that's a back zone. We'll add the right here to each of these. I'm going to add two more. 25 is the next available on mine. I'll give it a different name. We'll just call this um, East. Just really quickly to get through this. And finally, it, the fourth will be 26, will be West. That'll be our West zone. It's a four relay board. I'll hit submit. And we'll wait and it'll reboot and create a config and load the config into memory, create everything, and it'll boot back up. And if we look 
it'll say that the config is incomplete because that was half of it, as we'll see. Log in with admin and eight ones because now we actually have password. And it'll take it to another screen because we did not program the zones. And we look here, there's actually three programs, A, B, and C. And we have to configure up at least one if we want to do anything with it. So we can set the days of the week that it'll run. I'm just going to choose Sunday, so it'll run today, and then Monday, and I'll click Wednesday, Thursday. There we go. And also, the duration for the zones when they run. And I'm just going to pick something that'll work good for this demo. Obviously, it wouldn't work good for a garden. So one minute, one minute, two minutes, and three minutes. And I'm going to just pick a time here. Start at 12.30 in the afternoon. It's a 24-hour clock. And I'll hit submit. We're not going to configure the other two programs. And we can see now that it is uh, restarting on the front panel. And it's going to reload in just a second. And we will see that the config incomplete will clear. We're going to hit OK. And process complete. Very good. And it says it is idle. Also showing idle on the main page and that the valve is closed. We could see the menu right here for settings and program if we wanted to change those. But now I'll select the program because it's defaulted to disabled. Selected program A because that's the one we configured. And we now see that the program begins in an hour and two minutes. The valve is closed. And on the LCD screen it says 61 minutes. Obviously there's some work to be done. The event log is configured for server-side events, and this web page is configured to the server. We'll see event logging updates in just a bit. But I don't want to run this first test manually, so I'm going to go and change the time that the program's going to start. So I'm going to click the menu here. And change this time to give me about a two-minute delay from now. So 11.32. And then I'm going to click Submit. And when this restarts, we should have about two minutes before the entire program gets underway. So now we're going to log back in. We should see a different status now once we do so. And it does take a second or two for the web UI to update. I'm going to fast forward these two minutes to right before it starts. I'll point out the water consumption graph does not yet work. We see the event log is updating. Notice the valve status went to orange to midway. And then red to open. The front panel statuses changed. The consumption values now appear, though it does not work in the web UI, only on the LCD screen. Haven't written that yet. I'll test it out now by turning the meter emulator, and we could watch it increment on the LCD screen in tenths of a gallon. So that's working just fine. There is a discrepancy between my minute task manager and the actual time. So you can see this first one started 24 seconds into the minute. Something I have to work out too, so the first minute may run short as in this case. It just moved over to the second zone back, also one minute zone. We heard the relay click, saw the log update. Obviously the valve stayed open, there was no reason to close between zones, and the consumption went back to zero. I'll skip ahead to the third. And this one I'm going to manually cancel from the front panel. Closed zones appears in the log twice as well as a debug code. It's still something I'm working out. Eventually the cancel status will change, bringing the current status of the programs of the day. In this case, the schedules have completed. Programs can be manually run from the front panel regardless if the day of the week was selected by going to start program and then selecting from which program to start from in the line of programs. All the ones that were configured will be listed there. So I'll just choose the front and then is going to run from the front all the way through to the end of all of the programs. The UI and the front panel operate in the same manner, so I kicked it off from the front panel. I could adjust it in the UI, go to east, or I could just go to back or whatever, and hit begin to change it. 
Furthermore, I could start something from the front panel and cancel it from the UI by hitting the cancel button and the functionality works in the exact same fashion. There are some other menu options on the front panel. It also includes reboot the unit, which is self-explanatory. And I also added a software version, shows a little uh, boilerplate right there, automatically exits out in a couple of seconds. To shut off the sprinkler, all you would need to do is set the program to disabled, and that would effectively disable the sprinkler system. Now it says program is disabled, valve is closed, it'll never turn on. I want to display some other functionality, which is uh, editing zones where I could go to the settings menu here and scroll down. All these settings could be edited, but here's a possibility if I wanted to delete a zone right here in the middle, the east zone, hit the delete button and it's gone. While I'm here, for an example, I'm gonna rename west zone and its description. So I'm just gonna add a two to that and I'm gonna hit submit and it'll restart. Right now it's just easy to have everything restart on config changes. You don't change your sprinklers config that often. Logged in again, we'll make our way to program now and have a look and we'll see that the changes are also reflected in the programs. East has been removed, West has moved up a slot and renamed. I'm going to go back to configure, make some more changes. So now I'm going to add a zone and I could just assign any GPIO that I want. And then I'll hit submit. Log in again. And now since I've added a zone, I'm going to have to make my way to program because new zones will have a default duration of zero. It's going to have to be set or effectively it's not going to run at all. Set that to two and then I'm going to scroll down, hit submit, and there we go. Log in once more. And all the while throughout these changes, we can see in manual run, these are also updated as well as they all read from the same config file. But now configured, these zones are available for immediate use. That concludes this video on the status update of the ESP32 automated irrigation system. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Still some work to be done. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out in this series, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?